Hello again, B. Hi again, M. So what's up? Well, I could uh, be doing a bit better. A lot of people are in that situation. Oh, yeah. And you know what? One of the reasons why people are in a bad, bad place. Yeah. And many, in many times is because they're being lied to uh, by somebody close to them or even by a total stranger, but in a situation where, you know, it just hurts. Would you like to talk about lying? Uh, are you trying to confess something to me or are you trying to get a confession out of me? Um, let's put it like this. D do you lie, B? Everybody lies. No, not everybody. Well, you know, uh, there are different kinds of lies. You know, I think that uh, majority of people lie uh, in two situations. One, to, uh, in order not to hurt somebody's feelings. Uh, I like to use the I like to use the example of oh that's a very pretty poem. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm just evil. Uh, and the second one is to evade personal responsibility. I do both. Okay, but how about you know for personal gain? Never. Well, not you, but you know you you started by saying people lie because of these two things, and I think there's like twenty two things. Well, I'm pro I'm clearly projecting. Oh, okay, fair, fair enough. Well, let's be realistic. There's many, there are many different forms of lying. Oh, yeah. So, like, uh, I don't know, obfuscating the truth, you know, yeah. hiding the truth in, in general, spinning, you know, uh, mass media narratives. Oh, yeah. Telling half truths. There's always a reason and a purpose, etc., etc., etc. But you, you know what came to mind a couple of days ago when I was in a conversation with a colleague of mine? Okay. I don't know how we came to that. But I remember this person from basically my childhood. Okay. Who was like, he, he used to tell these stories, man. Okay. We used to call him, I won't say his name, but his nickname was Baron. Oh, yeah. And uh, believe it or not, many people don't actually know why we give th this nickname to people who lie. I'm not sure if you know, but there was th there's this fictional character okay. called Baron, Baron Minhausen. Okay, yeah, I know him. So he's this fictional nobleman from Germany, or ger he's German, but you know, it's the book is from like 1730, no, 1785 or something. Okay. The novel is based on a real person. So I, I know that the novel is called uh, Baron Minhausen's Narrative uh, at his marvelous travels and campaigns in Russia, something like that. I might have gotten it 100%. Um, because I remember it. And the thing is, uh, th 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 there was this fiction character in the book. Okay. He, used to, he used to tell people that he, f you know, went to the moon and fought like a 12 meter crocodile. <laughs> right? Okay. That, that, that's a 40 feet giant cr croc. But th the real guy behind, uh, behind the story which the story was based on, okay. was actually was actually pretty similar to that because he he was he partook a war. I believe the war was between whatever Russia was back then, okay. let's say Russian Empire uh, and uh, Turkey. Uh, I think it was Turkey, not Ottoman Empire, like Turkey. And he went back from the war and started telling these tales, right? Okay. And I, I even remember that he sued the author of the book <laughs> <laughs> so so i think the author of the book actually like forfeited the rights or something like that and he then he passed passed away and only like afterwards you know people attributed the book to him okay so he really really took a spin on, on this guy and this is why you know when people lie you call them baron minhausen ah okay gotcha yeah, there's even cartoons being, uh, like, car uh, there are cartoons from, like, two centuries ago. Uh, well, you know, c cartoons a hundred years ago, maybe. Yeah. But, like, black and white cartoons from Russia that depict Baron Minhausen. By the way, you know that uh, Simpsons episode that begins with uh, uh, Leonard Nimoy saying, The following tale is true, and by true I mean false. But then again, isn't our entertainment the only truth? The answer is no. Uh, it is such a great introduction, and the funny thing is, 
That introduction is literally 2000 years old. I'll explain. Okay. Have you ever heard of Lucian of Samosata? Um, no. Okay. He was a Syrian uh, satirist who lived, I think, in 2nd century AD. I should check, maybe 3rd. And he wrote a science fiction novel called A True Story that begins with the sentence, this isn't a true story, everything here is a complete lie. And it talks about uh, this ship uh, that gets uh, drawn into this vortex that transports them, I think, to the moon, where they're uh, involved with, uh, in a struggle uh, with, uh, with aliens. So this is literally a 2,000 uh, year, years old story, even though when I describe it, it sounds like a modern science fiction novel. Yeah, honestly, sounds like something I would read. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it was funny to uh, see that uh, Simpsons jokes is actually literally older than feudalism. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, be because before feudalism, you had slavery, oh, right? Yeah. And then slavery again. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that. And even after feudalism, so. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, going back to my friend, the Baron, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you wouldn't believe these tales, man. You just, you just wouldn't believe them. Let me give you an example, right? So he used to tell people that he went to the army. And at the time when, you know, we were like growing up into men, okay. uh, our generation didn't even have to serve in the army. So, you know... Uh, Nobody really went to the army unless you had to. And he always used to tell people that he went into the army, but he was a heavy smoker. Uh, he used to like smell glue, you know, oh, okay. uh, used, used that as drugs. He was like in a very bad shape in general, but he, he used to tell people that he was like in, in a, a unit that dives, yeah. you know, like a diver okay. unit, like spe special ops. And that, believe it or not, in, in that unit, he used to drive a helicopter. Yeah, one might, you know, think, uh, how does that make any sense? But it is what it is. But but then he used to he used to tell how he, drew, you know, flew the helicopter upside down so that he can cut some grass. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay, this is, uh, you know, this is... <laughs> no, no, this is just... No, no, dude, this is just the beginning. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you more. <laughs> Please do. I, I mean, so, I don't think what can be crazier than cutting grass with, a, uh, with an upside down chopper. Well, let, let me show you. So I, I'll try to narrate like him because it's easier. Um, I don't know. I'll try. But anyways, so here I am uh, riding a, a, a motorcycle. And I, I see this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful girl. And looking at her, I, I, I just uh, start falling off a cliff. <laughs> okay. But then I see a branch, you know, sticking from, uh, from that cliff. And I catch that branch with my with my bare arms, and I I catch the motorcycle with my legs. But then, the girl that I was looking at sees me, and I feel embarrassed, so I start doing pull-ups. <laughs> you should see my face right now. You should see my face right now. I I I can see her face, but look, dude, there's more. <laughs> so so okay. Okay, so on another on another time, he was uh, he was like uh, being chased by police because he was driving 200 kilometers per hour, which is um, maybe 120 something miles per hour uh, on on a, on a highway, and he was being chased by the police. Mm -hmm. So suddenly he sees like a a, a side road, you know, from a high highway <laughs> in Serbia. Um, he takes a very sharp turn and he does it so you know uh skillfully that the police runs by him right okay and they don't they don't even see him but then after he stopped and turned off his lights you know to avoid detection he hears this very interesting spooky sound he ex exits the vehicle uh. starts following the sound the sound sounds like moaning or something but then he understands that it's a baby it's a crying baby he he starts following the sound comes to a freshly um you know dug dug out earth starts digging and he finds that somebody has put a baby um 
and you know now uh, put puts a baby below below the ground and now he found and saved that baby wait because he's okay yeah that, ex exactly that's exactly okay how he described it <laughs> uh, can i interrupt you for a second actually Absolutely. i do know a real life story with this scenario and it's even that crazier than um than this uh, it, uh like a real real uh, a story. real story and then okay j just so you know just so you know i'm pretty sure he might have stolen uh, uh when did he you know, say this story do you have any recollection well that's gonna be 20 years ago <laughs> actually the time frame fits the time frame fits um we have this um we have this uh, young guy who used to come uh, to our uh, to the liturgies in our little chapel in student campus and uh, one day uh, and he was in uh, different orphanages throughout his life and uh, one uh, and he's um, uh, what's the word uh, his caretaker all, uh, always came with him she was a pretty nice lady she it's not adoption i don't uh, yeah foster family yeah she was his foster okay. uh, she was his foster mother and one day uh, she comes and says uh, uh, his mother died would you attend the funeral and i am simply shocked i i thought that his mother died earlier or that he didn't know who he, uh, who his mother was and um, the how the story went his mother had uh, uh, a history of uh, you know uh, mental problems and she had a heavy, heavy case of post, uh, postpartum uh, depression so once she has given birth to him she literally buried him uh, alive as a baby uh, underground and uh, now this is the crazy part that's even crazier than your friend's fiction um, uh, there were shepherds nearby and the sheep heard the baby's cries beneath you know shallow shallow ground and they ran to the place and started digging him up and uh, he ended up in an orphanage but this is something that uh, a lot of new newspapers have reported on and i think that he might have actually heard this story from the newspaper so this is absolute crazy you know that uh, uh, i i'm pretty sure that th things like this are sort of connected because uh, uh, i mean uh, how often do you hear about a, a, a living baby being buried? It is something so <laughs> so beyond so, uh, anything uh, a person can imagine, you know? So, first of all, the, the story scares the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, but second of all, it amazes me how it actually fits. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, like I can imagine the, the Baron... Uh, reading newspaper paper and being like, oh, oh I'm so going to use this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I had a friend who cut grass with a chopper. Okay, just kidding. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the final tale I remember from uh, the Baron yeah. uh, was uh, regarding another police chase. This time, again, uh, you know, 200 kilometers per hour, but in the city center. Uh quite impossible yeah if uh, um j just a, just a side note guys if you have ever been in belgrade there's no chance in hell you'll ever reach 200 kilometers per hour ever <laughs> do go on yeah m maybe maybe but you know instant death yeah um but so he was running away from the police you know again um 200 kilometers per hour 120 something miles per hour as people tend to do yes exactly and um of course uh there's a there's there's a lady with uh you know a, a kid stroller uh in the middle of the road and and <laughs> he notices her five meters uh <laughs> okay uh you know in front of him <laughs> so he's unable to break uh he knows he can't break from 200 kilometers per hour in five meters oh no so what does he do I I, I I can't even guess <laughs> so 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 okay so so he breaks the glass in front of him where, where all the gauges are okay and takes the needle of the speed gauge and turns turns it to zero uh. <laughs>
and the car stops we, we, half a meter <laughs> without a momentum dude dude he broke dude he took the needle he 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 turned it to zero what you know what's what, you know uh, uh what else do you want me to say <laughs> uh, i mean this is far fetched even for austin powers you know <laughs> i can tell you this he always had a crowd uh, oh, I, right? I, I, that i can tell <laughs> so so it was actually super super fun if you're going to be a liar please be that kind of a liar because because you're going to make people laugh you're going to make people remember you imagine imagine this like i remember him like 20 years afterwards right yeah because he used to tell some some you know complete uh unbelievable fiction tales yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it, it, it's it's kind of cool right oh but there there's other people who are gonna lie to you and hurt you oh um, yeah so if you're gonna be a liar you know uh choose wisely which kind of a liar you're gonna be uh but i did want wanted to like i won't say confess <laughs> um but you know i do lie too from time to time i think these are all uh, what we would say call them white lies yeah um, for the purpose of, you know, not hurting somebody or just uh, avoiding an unnecessary, you know, complication or something like that. Yeah. But I can't say I feel good when I do it. Nobody does. Nobody I does. Just, I, I just, well, I think, well, I've seen people lie with such passion. <laughs> Glee. <laughs> exactly. Like, like enjoying every second of it. Oh, man. Right? Just, just as the Baron enjoyed every second of telling his tales. Remember when I said there's like many different ways of lying, you know, yeah. lie can be a lot of things. I just, I just, let, let me tell you what happened, right? You know that Serbia, the country where we live at, is like the, 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 the land of wonders, right? Yeah. It's like anything can happen. So, <laughs> so here oh, yeah. I am. So I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving a, a urine sample. Uh, to 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 the lab for analysis, uh, right? Okay, this took uh, uh, this took an organic turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's it's not mine. <laughs> so you were giving a different person's urine urine sample. Yes, yes, yes. I have kids, so oh, oh. Uh, so kids get sick. But anyways, so I, um, hear. I I I give the urine sample, and I get a paper. They tell me it's gonna be you know in four to five days. The the only reason why I gave it to a public. A lab, right, is because they do it good. They do good analysis. Everybody, everybody in like private lab labs would be like, you know, it's gonna be done in one day, and they would like do it very bad. But anyways, I I get a paper, and in that piece of paper, I see a beautiful, beautiful thing. It says, "This is your code. You can visit this page, enter the code, and track your results." And I'm like, whoa, in Serbia? No way. And then I go and type in the, the URL, and there's like, yes, way. The page is there. I type in the code eagerly, and it says, we don't have any records of any samples being left to us for analyses uh, with that code. And it's a barcode. It's like, you know, there's a serial number, everything. And I'm like, I, I've checked the code five times, both me and my wife. And and we we get no results. And I'm like I'm I'm getting frustrated because I I waited for like three days before I used the code because I was like oh, no, I have the code you know yeah <laughs> there's there's nothing to worry about. So I go to the lab early a.m. right. Of course there's a a huge queue of 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 old people and sick people waiting to leave a urine sample. How dare they? Yeah. So I hack the queue. Don't don't ask how. I hack the queue to ask a question. And I'm like, sorry, um, like I can't get the results using this number. And she like looks at me and she's like, well, of course, that shit don't work. <laughs> and I'm like, like, I, like, how do you mean? How do you mean? Like this, this paper you've given me, it's worthless. She's like, yeah, that's one way to put it. <laughs> and I'm like, like you, you can imagine she's like, there, there's a queue. Everybody's like pissed off, frustrated. And she's like, just like, cool. Like it doesn't work. You know, it is what it is. I usually, in such situations, when something is done pointlessly, I usually say something along the lines of, oh, it's there just for the protocol, you know, just for the sake of the ritual. 
I mean, it, it's yeah, but, nothing. But dude, <laughs> dude, you, it it looks very high tech. You get a barcode, like like the uh, like the piece of paper. You like I I trusted them, man. I trusted them. Uh, M, you literally trusted our health system. How more naive can you be? Exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, exactly. M, I'm telling you, in all honesty, in Christ, don't open your spam folder in inbox. Don't do it, <laughs> okay. especially okay. if your Nigerian cousin has died. <laughs> don't don't believe it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember a lot of people uh, from these um, countries, you know, very eager to leave their entire fortune to me for this or that reason. Uh, because they're sick, dying, and you just want to make somebody happy. I think I have lost about 200 family members in Nigeria, at least. Yep. But anyways, you know, that that's a, that's that's quite a lie, if you ask me. And a very hurtful one. Especially when, when you're a naive sucker, such as I am. Because I think, honestly, I was just thrilled that there's something digital that works in Serbia. Right? Because anywhere you touch, nothing really works. Well, that... You know? Uh, you, you you should probably know that nothing's digital in Serbia, and that is why why we are recording this podcast on a spinning wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, they they lied to me. You know, they just they just they just lied to me, um, and nobody cares. There's nobody whom you can complain to, etc. Uh, etc. Et um, but I guess in this country we're kind of used to it. I think even the bigger problem is when you're being lied to, and you don't see it. There's yeah. no way for you to see it. And that's what's happening to us every day um, from the quote-unquote world's seventh power. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. Did you notice that uh, yeah, when we discussed charities in our two previous episodes, uh, um, uh, it basically boiled down uh, whether you're being lied to or not. You know? Well, exactly. Uh, it, exactly. it is at the crux of the issue. And um, do you know that uh, book, Kite Runner? Yeah, uh, I think it's a pretty good book, and there's this uh, very powerful passage when um, the main uh, the main protagonist uh, he asks uh, his very wise father what's the uh, what's the worst sin, and he says it's a lie, and he says why a lie? Well, he says uh, I'm paraphrasing. He says something along the lines of when you murder a man, you steal his life. Uh, when you steal from a man, you take unlawfully something that, that belongs to him. But when you lie, you take away the truth from him. Uh, and um, and the problem with that is that uh, he he will have uh, trust issues later on. And then he starts listing, you know, different kinds of lies and how all of these deprive one from uh, from truth. And I think that is the um, you know, in the gospel, Christ calls Satan, uh, you know, the father of lies. And uh, after reading this novel, I completely understood why, for example, he calls him also the murderer since the beginning, but he doesn't call him like the father of murder, even though he, yeah. yeah. Uh, but after reading this book, I sort of understood why, because uh, just pay attention how around you everything is a lie. Uh, nearly all of politics is a lie. Nearly all of marketing is a lie. A word from our sponsors. Okay, there's no word of our, from our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are in a huge part living a, a complete, complete lie. Yeah, and every other religion but ours lies. <laughs> <laughs> you know what religion doesn't lie people lie yeah yeah you know? that's true that's true people lie pe people deceive you know yeah so we are basically uh up to our necks in lies and uh, truth is a very very rare exception what is the truth oh who said that <laughs> <laughs> well i'm just demonstrated that that i had in past, read a book. <laughs> uh, it shows because you, you. It seems to me like you're trying to. Show, have you read this? Have you read that? So, so next time, you know, in, in our next episode, I'm gonna be prepared, man. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna have five books that you never read, but you've heard of them, and I'm gonna be like, well, B, dude, you know, you know, never read Kite Runner. What the hell? Uh, 
in my in my defense, uh, I'm not saying that you don't read. Uh, I just ha- ha- uh, I just happened to have read a book that had a very uh, relevant uh, quo- uh, quote on lies. So, all- like and also the, the gospel, the, the Bible, also that, also that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but seriously, we are really, really living a lie. You know, yeah. basically, I-, I see, for example, in social media, uh, there's like this how should I put it, initiative, right? Okay. To deal with quote-unquote false news. Yeah. And while it sounds awesome, when you see them cracking down on a very specific subset of uh, news, you understand that they will do this to support a certain narrative, which is usually, you know, just a lie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know... Also, the biggest issue with us is who is the ultimate arbiter of what's true and what's not, you know? Uh, And I think that our fascination with science uh, stems from our perpetual desire to know finally what is true and what is not. But sadly, science can go only so far, and sadly, science does not exist outside of people. And people are prone to lies and deceptions and everything, and... That is where it falls short. Yeah, well, let me let me say this. So I, I think science in its nature is very much oriented towards finding out the truth of things. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as you've put it, what's true and what's not. It's just that, you know, people who do science makes science sometimes very subjective and actually subjected to, to their own interest or a goal that is that goes well beyond finding out what's true and what's not, how things work or how they do not work. Um, so I, that's not a problem of science at all. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a problem. It's just a problem of people. Honestly, the same thing happens with organized religion. The same exact same thing. Yeah, people will abuse different things for their own gain, and that's how that, that that's people for you. Right? Yeah. I think you asked a very good question. What or who is the ultimate arbiter of truth? I believe we're, we're very deep, like knee deep into an age of apostasy. Yeah. Where values of the past are, are simply fading away, which in, in, in turns creates some new values, which have, have a huge problem. They're very, very vague. The reason why today's values are extremely vague and open to interpretation more than anything we've, we've ever seen is because they support the illusion that we're living. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the, on- that's the only way you can do it, by having very vague, vague guidelines, you know? Yeah. For example, take the Ten Commandments, right? Thou shall not kill. Sorry for paraphrasing and destroying everything, but... It's fine. Right? It's fine. It's, I think that's very clear. It's a very clear, it's a commandment. It's, it's not a guideline. It's a commandment, yeah. right? It's, it's, this is how you do it. This is, this is a, a pattern. This is a template. This is a, that, that's the way for you. <laughs> you know, where today, all you have value-wise, right, are guidelines. You know, don't do microaggression, respect minorities, respect other races. Oh, no, respecting other races, no. <laughs> yeah, be tall, be tolerant. And you know, what does it mean to respect other races? What does it mean to be tolerant? Well, it means whatever you want it to mean because you can you can use it to your advantage to win an argument or to earn money. To, well, better said, to gain money. Um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. And that's that's where we're going back a full circle, why we are in fact living a lie, because the values of today are very, very vague. And have replaced very good, at least in, in, in the Western Europe especially, they have replaced basically Christian values, which, which, which were the, the foundation of a lot of, a lot of good things. Uh, have you noticed that uh, in modern day and age, you're basically not supposed, you're not supposed to tell anyone what they should do, except when it is to be more tolerant or not to be judgmental. That is the only thing that is tolerated when you tell some, uh, somebody. For example, if I type uh, somewhere on the internet, 
that is not uh, how she should be dressed or he shouldn't have that many tattoos, majority of replies to that would be uh, you're like this, you're like that, why are you judging him, why are you judging her and so on and so forth. But uh, it is fine for them to tell me that I shouldn't be judgmental, but I can't, you know, share my opinion. That is something something that's, uh, that was just on my mind recently, because... You mean g- gigantic h- hypocrisy? Yeah, well, sort of, like, today, as you said, and thou shall not kill, and, well, very, very relevant to this episode, thou shall not bear f- a false witness, these are commandments, they're not suggestions, they're yeah. not nice recommendations, they're not fortune cookie uh, prophecies or anything. Yeah, it's very clear. Like It's very clear, this. yeah. That. So, you know, by the way, I must say that uh, you had quite a uh, quite, uh, colorful pathological liar. I didn't have such experiences. The sole pathological liar that I knew, he would usually tell these extreme tales of like, my father has cancer and like this would devastate me. So, you know, I would start praying for him. I would read an Ecatist to St. Nectarios and so on. Then I would offer him. Oh, by the way, I, I obtained some holy oil from the uh, from the tomb of Saint Nectarius. Do you want me to bring you some? And he, and he would be like, No, 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 thank you. You're uh, that's very nice of you. It turned out that his father didn't have cancer, but in his defense, and I think this is uh, this is important in the case of some pathological liars, he did have some some other issues, which he probably didn't didn't want to admit to his uh, closest friends. But he still craved attention and, you know, like some sort of comfort. Oh, yeah. And in claiming that his father is ill, he was by proxy receiving comfort, uh, you know, from some other side. So in a way, understand it. I, I, I understand him. That's not the route that I would choose, but... Uh, you, know, you know what's fun to me Yeah. Um, in, in that story? So I can see that guy being like... Um, you know, tells that. Yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, do you need anything? And he would be like, you know, taking it all in. Yeah. Like, you know, enjoying the attention, even though it's a falsely generated one. <laughs> and then B goes goes home and prays for him and like, you know, does all these things, which he does not see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you know, doesn't really care about. It's just, it's just fun to me. You know what a single lie can can start. Oh, oh, yeah. Like an avalanche of different things that a single, very small but significant lie can just kickstart. Oh, 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 um, do I have a story for you? Okay, that, that, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> Let me tell you a story of a liar called B. Okay. So I was working. So, sorry, 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 sorry. Is, is it you? Yes. Uh, oh, how, however did you know? Okay. Okay, go ahead, please. So, I was working uh, on my previous workplace. One of my co-workers uh, commented on something on my Facebook uh, profile, and one of my friends commented something. Uh, commented on something. Oh my god, sorry, but every fight ever starts like uh, that no, no, these uh, days. Yeah, uh, th- uh, <laughs> this didn't start a fight. This started a small lie that turned into a very funny story. So... <laughs> uh, so... Uh, one of my co-workers uh, approaches me and, oh, B, uh, who's that uh, Z, uh, Z guy? Uh, and I, uh, and I tell, uh, tell her, well, he's, my, uh, he's a very good friend of mine, he's a catechist, and she's like, oh, and, uh, and I tell her, no, 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 he's completely normal, and, and she's like, oh, wow, great, let me check his Facebook uh, profile. We go to his Facebook profile and, you know, she's looking through his picture and she says, Oh, he's cute. Oh, wow, he watches Monty Python. That's great. And he has, uh, she asks me, how old is he? And they say, about 30. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So she goes through his photos and there's a photo of Z, photo of Z, photo of Z, photo of Z holding a baby, photo of Z, photo of Z, photo of Z. Oh, great. Uh, we should meet up. And I'm okay. So... He he likes babies and he's in his thirties, from from her perspective. Uh, yeah, and uh, I uh, and uh, and she's like, oh great, we should meet, and I'm fine. So I contact Zed. Uh, hey Zed, uh, can can my coworker contact you over Facebook? And he's like, well, well, sure, of course, why not? And they go to her office. Hey P, Zed told me that uh, you can add him, and she looks at me like I'm the biggest idiot, which I was. You idiot! I thought uh, I meant that we should like 
spontaneously, quote unquote, go to a coffee uh, for a coffee, the three of us and we should like meet, not that you blurt out. Okay, fine. So anyway, they arrange a date. That date went relatively fine, but the day after, P comes into my office with a whole procession of female co colleagues and, uh, and she tells me, B, yes, P, why didn't you tell me that was his baby? <laughs> and I was like, well, I, I assume that you had correctly assumed that it was his baby. And, and she's like, B, you idiot. The first thing I do when I go to a friend's home, if they have a child, I take the child, I take a picture with a child and, you know, uh, I post it on Facebook. So that is his uh, baby. Yeah. Oh, I saw that coming. No, oh, no, no, no. You don't know what, what's coming. And so that is his uh, baby. Both of them. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? How many, uh, how many children does he have? Three? He has oh. three children. Uh, he has already, uh, he already has three children. And they say, uh, well, he divorced his first wife. And his second one. And the wife. second one, they're separated. What does that mean? <laughs> well, she cheated on him and he tried to forgive her, but she didn't want to return. So now, uh, now he's sort of single. And sh she's like, when did he forgive her? A week ago? Okay, you're officially an idiot, B. <laughs> you're officially an idiot. And then... But, but yeah? why? Why did... Why? Why what? First of all, yes, you are an idiot. But the question is, why did you do it? No, 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 wait, wait. And then, and then she puts two and two together. Wait, he already has two marriages behind him and three children. You tell me, you told me he's, uh, he's 30. No, I told you he was around 30. How old is he? 39. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason I lied, well, I didn't lie. I just... To, oh, uh, you no, lied. No, no, no. You so lied. I didn't lie. What kind of, a, what kind of a per perverse satisfaction did you get from, I, from doing this to uh, somebody? I don't uh, get it, I'm man. not... Uh, I didn't lie. I just twisted truth until nothing remained of it. <laughs> until it became completely unrecognizable. No, but, but, but still, dude, why? Okay, first, I thought that they would make a good pair. And literally, they would. My friend, he's a really great guy, and... So you actually had good intentions. Ironically, uh, later on, he married for the third time, and I was his best man on that wedding. <laughs> he didn't marry my co-worker. Yeah, you're, you're like the world's best slash worst wingman ever. I'm the best wingman and the worst matchmaker, and these two things can be concurrent. Uh, and, uh, you know, this co-worker was with her, uh, with our co-worker in their office, and P was, like, typing on the computer, and suddenly she stops. Uh, how did she put it? Wow. B really wanted to help out his friend. Not me, but his friend. And uh, her, uh, that uh, our uh, co-worker tells her, like, well, go on, on, on another date with him, you know? Uh, what can possibly go wrong? And she goes, like, well, I don't know. I, I feel like I would you know, wasting his time that he could spend uh, with his, uh, all of his children. <laughs> and, and, and the co-worker says, oh no, that's fine. You, you two go on a date and the children can spend time with their moms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if the, the last comment was like, he's cute though. <laughs> well, you know, ironically... He, he's a, uh, he looks well, he, you know, runs marathons. No, there's nothing ironically yeah. about it yeah, if, yeah, he, yeah. if he, had, he had three wives. Like, he must be at least good looking. Well, uh, he has his way, but you know, he's, he's a good father, good person. I really don't know what the issue is with his two previous marriages falling apart. You know, <laughs> he's a great father. He's a he's a great person. Has a drug problem. He has a drug problem. He's <laughs> <You know? laughs> a closeted homosexual. <laughs> I mean, I I really don't know. But then again, I haven't been married to the guy, so I apologize. I don't know firsthand what the issue is. But uh, this should be a great uh, 
announcement uh, for one of our future episodes uh, where we will deal with gossiping. <laughs> Well, I think you you can take that one on your own, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I I just I mean I can be there, you know. You, uh, actually, actually we can just uh, take the last half of this episode and simply rename it as uh, on gossiping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two mice on gossiping. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to say no, it won't be on gossiping, it will be just gossiping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two hours of quality gossiping. Well, um, thank you for <laughs> thank you for telling me the story. I never knew you were such an evil little scheming person. E evil matchmaker. Yeah, but honestly, the way you were you were telling it, like the way the the, the way it was layered with half truths. Yeah, it's it honestly sounded like you were having some kind of satisfaction from doing it to somebody. You know, I, I was watching a friend's episode, I can't remember which episode it was, but there was a similar situation when all of these half-truths start to unfold mid-date, and that scene wasn't as funny as this one, literally, like, mine was crazier. Except, of course, maybe it, it is better presented in friends than, uh, than I can tell it, but literally, firsthand, mine was better, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna do something. Um to wrap this episode up, okay. uh, I'm going to destroy friends for everybody. <laughs> okay, please <laughs> so, do. Because it's, because it's a lie. It's a lie. You know how a lot of people uh, perceived Ross from Friends yeah. as, you know, David Schwimmer, as cool? Okay. He was like this cool geek scientist kind of a type. Okay. Well, there is a literal, like, like there's like, like maybe a couple of shows that are like comedy shows. Yeah. Um, coming from the United States that don't have that fake laughter. Uh, uh, canned laughter. Canned laughter. Canned laughter, yes. Yeah. So try Googling or YouTube Googling raw scenes without uh, yeah. the canned laughter. Oh, yeah. And you, you, you will see, you know, the cool Ross, you know, turn into a super creepy terrible terrible person <laughs> i wanted to tell uh, i wanted to tell everyone watch it uh, in a dark room at night alone but it's crazy man but it's crazy. there's this episode in in um his university with his like boss or something okay. who ate his sandwich okay <laughs> he was very pissed about somebody eating his sandwich but there was this drama music and laughter and all, all yeah. of that that followed it but just watch it without it <laughs> oh man when the lie when the lies start unfolding you see the truth behind and that's the truth is that he's a freaking psycho oh man uh by the way before we wrap up uh um you probably know that my spiritual father has died today for everybody listening uh your spiritual father's name is dimitri yeah and uh may god rest his soul so pr pr please remember to pray for him and he will pray for you Bye, B. Talk to you in the next one. Bye, M. See you. See you soon. Hey there, listeners of the Church Mouse Chronicles podcast. Just wanted to remind you to share and subscribe to our podcast using your platform of choice. We're available pretty much everywhere. And to let you know that you can give us your thoughts and feedback at any time, as all our episodes are available on our website and feature a comment section. Just visit churchmouse.show, find the episode you listen to, or use the direct link in the episode description, and let us know what you think. We would love to know how you feel about our show. Thanks. Thanks.